Star Trek was a groundbreaking show that in many ways was very forward-thinking when it came to how it represented humanity. However, it also had limitations due to bigotries of the time. Turnabout Intruder is the final Star Trek episode that aired before its cancellation and is an infamously controversial one, often considered one of the worst. Creator Gene Roddenberry, going through a bitter divorce at the time, set out to write a blatantly sexist episode in an attempt to quote-unquote prove that women are ineffective leaders. It's odd when looking at the show as a whole, because Star Trek showed competent women in leadership positions several times. Uhura has taken command of the ship a couple times prior. The pilot had the character number one, a woman who was the second in command. To pow a Vulcan from the episode of Muck Time is a highly respected leader and the only person at the time to turn down a seat at the Federation Council. Another thing, that's the pow of Vulcan. All of Vulcan in one package. How can I back out in front of her? So it's easier to look at this episode as more of an individual case. The episode is sexist, there's no getting around that, especially with its heavy emphasis on the hysterical woman stereotype. But coming at this from a more modern perspective where greater gender equality status has been achieved since the episode aired, there is more to the story that's worth looking at. The plot of the episode is that Dr. Janice Lester, a scientist and ex-girlfriend of Captain Kirk's, steals his body as a means to control the Enterprise. Kirk must convince the crew of his situation in order to get his body back. Through Dr. Lester, there's an interesting character study in self-hatred and how giving into hatred, even if it's towards yourself, is destructive and robs you of your humanity. The reason Dr. Lester says she's so angry is because women can't be starship captains. Right before she says that, she says that the year she was together with Kirk was the only time in her life she was alive, showing that there were deep-seated issues beforehand. The year we were together at Starfleet is the only time in my life I was alive. I never stopped you from going on with your space work. Your world of starship captains doesn't admit women. It isn't fair. No, it isn't. Kirk mentions that their relationship didn't work out because Dr. Lester was consumed by hatred and ambition. Specifically, Dr. Lester hates her own femininity. Already that's an interesting character, a self-hating woman, troubled even before she met Kirk. We never know exactly why this particular woman hates her own femininity so much. So there's a lot of room for interpretation. Was she abused? Was it brain trauma? Since Kirk's body specifically is her ideal and she loved him, is she a closeted trans man experiencing severe dysphoria? We'll never know for sure. Kirk has been in a relationship with Dr. Lester and the whole time is compassionate towards her. Despite her access to help and humanity, she ultimately refuses it instead opting for a seemingly easy fix of power and control over others, specifically over a loved one. An already corrupted person is seeking something that has long been known to corrupt people, further emphasizing the destructive cycle she's trapped in. Dr. Lester successfully steals Kirk's body and command of the Enterprise in the first few minutes, so she gets what she says she wants. However, for someone who wanted Kirk's body and power so badly, there is not one scene of her actually truly enjoying them. She was also a doctor by title and the leader of the expedition on Camus too, so she had power in her own right, but chose to abuse and overlook it. Instead, the rest of the episode is spent with her vengefully trying to dispose of her old body with Kirk trapped inside it. Even though she has what she says she wants, the existence of her old body she hates so much will always be a constant reminder in the back of her head of her shame. With her power, she makes increasingly destructive decisions, her hatred ultimately giving herself away and leading to her downfall. Dr. Lester is someone who didn't feel power in her own life, even though she had it, and tried to control someone else in order to get what she wanted. This shows us that if you hate yourself, no amount of power, status, beauty, love, glory, or really any external accomplishment will solve your problems and make you happy. And taking those things from another person is a very hollow substitute for creating it for yourself. Even if Dr. Lester successfully killed Captain Kirk trapped in her old body, she would still have been the same person and most likely still would not have been happy. Instead of in prison, she ends up with someone who wants to take care of her. 
She has refused help several times in the past, so who's to say that her doctor, earlier said to be incompetent, would be of any help? Kirk's final lines are, Her life could have been as rich as any woman's. If only... He acknowledges the tragedy that this smart, talented, attractive person wasted a lot of potential by giving in to hatred. Compare this to the episode Plato's Stepchildren, where a humiliated, abused, and self-loathing person could choose power over others like his oppressors, but ultimately chose to have power over himself, and as a result builds a happy new life when the opportunity presents itself. Whereas here, a self-loathing person opting to find an easy solution to her problems by looking outward instead of inward, as a result, traps herself further in a vicious destructive cycle that she may or may not ever come out of. If she chose herself and embraced humanity, her life would have been a lot richer. She chose hatred instead. Even with the greater limitations of her time, she still wasted a lot of potential. This is not a story about a smart, competent person who was denied opportunity just because of a stupid prejudice the way she tells it. This is a story about a self-loathing person with a victim complex. Sadly, people like that are out there. In this case, Roddenberry himself may have thought this specifically about his ex-wife, or may have even projected it onto her. Self-loathing person with a victim complex also, strangely enough, is an accusation a lot of people today use towards a lot of other people. I don't want this to be used as a justification of women or men or any other group. The takeaway I'm aiming at is, well, first, that power and divorce can bring out the worst in people. But the bigger picture... There will always be stupid prejudices out there. There will also always be some imposed limitations on what we can and can't do, with some people experiencing that more seriously than others. But we also have far more power than we realize to make the happy, fulfilling lives that we do want.